Monitoring Learner Achievement Form 2 Midline Study is a research by the Kenya National Examinations Council, NEC, to establish levels of achievement in mathematics, biology, physics, chemistry, English, and Kiswahili among secondary school students. What the world has said is that regardless of the career, the following seven core competencies will determine how successful you are going to be in the 21st century. Colleagues, let us go out there and re-emphasize all our stakeholders that we have the ownership of this curriculum. Oh, for ownership. I'll say very quickly that for the first time in this country, we have a curriculum that is homegrown, that is Kenyan, developed by Kenyan, for the vision of Kenya, for the future that we are imagining. The study was done in 110 sub-counties drawn from 30 select counties targeted for the Secondary Education Quality Improvement Project, SECIP, interventions in Kenya. SECIP is a six-year intervention that aims to improve student learning in secondary education and transition from primary to secondary education in the select sub-counties. The probe was focused on variables that affect learner achievement such as enrollment, student age, and absenteeism. The significant increase in student enrollment for both boys and girls. However, the study revealed a gender disparity in student enrollment with 52.1% of boys being enrolled in Form 2 against 47.9% of the girls. Increase in enrollment is attributed to government policy on 100% transition in basic education and SECIP interventions in targeted schools. The study found that 51.7% of Form 2 students were age-appropriate, while 48.1% were over age 18 years and above. Higher proportion of boys were over age at 57.6%, compared to 37.8% girls. The sub-counties with the highest proportion of overage boys include Msambweni, 100%, Teso South, 96.3%, Magarini, 94.5%, Lunga Lunga, 93.4%, Kaloleni, 92.9%, Loitoktok, 91.7%, Malindi, 91.4%, and Laikipia North, 90.9%. As for overage girls, Merti and Balambala sub-counties had 100% each, while Magarini and Bunyala recorded 87.5% and 84.8% respectively. Overage affects students' achievements negatively. Of course, we have a little bit more technical issues like the issues of biological cycles for the girl child, which should actually be addressed because it can also be very expensive for the girl child. And therefore, sometimes they may not be in school on the days that uh, they, they are in these cycles. The issue of absenteeism in school is a serious issue that needs attention by all stakeholders. It is important for the different schools to come up with ways of curbing these issues. 73% indicated that frequent student absenteeism to a large extent affected syllabus coverage. Students who were absent during the term scored lower points. Learners need to be engaged meaningfully and practically to motivate them to attend all STEM lessons. STEM jobs are the future of the Kenyan economy. Competencies in mathematics and sciences Adequate resources and parental engagement are the main factors that assist me as a learner in STEM subjects. Principals reported a 30.7% prevalence of class repetition. Highest repetition rate in 2020 was reported at Form 4 at a mean of 3.4. There were slightly more boys than girls repeating at Form 4, Form 3 and Form 1 at 1.8, 0.9 and 0 0.6 against 1.6, 0 0.8 and 0 0.5 of the girls respectively. At Form 2, slightly more girls than boys repeated. At Form 2 level, when you did the survey, those young people were quite disadvantaged 
due to COVID. The learning uh, was uh, disrupted tremendously. And then you know our parents, huh? they rarely check what these young people do. Wazazi wana talk as we wana end. These young men had a uh, very serious disruption. And even when they came back to school, for us to ground them, it was quite a challenge. Highest number of student dropout occur in Form 2 with girls recording highest number. Causes of girls dropout at Form 2 as reported by principals. Pregnancy, 54.5%. Financial reasons at 28.9%. Early marriage at 26.6% low academic achievement at 13 percent. Students who involve their parents in the studies, their outcome improves. Pregnancy, truancy, early marriage, drug and substance abuse have led students fail to achieve their dreams. Causes of boys drop out at Form 2 as reported by principals include financial reasons at 31.7 percent, truancy that is staying away from school without a good reason by a student at 26.9%, low academic performance at 18.2%, drug and substance abuse at 16.6%. The study found that the government's initiative of distributing textbooks for core subjects to all public schools has improved the ratio of one-to-one -one textbook to student in all assessed subjects. Students Six Quick Infobytes reported a one-on-one -on -one textbook student ratio as follows. English at 73.7%, Chemistry at 72.8%, Kiswahili at 72.3%, Mathematics at 65.4%, Biology 65.1% and Physics 62.7%. Availability of school infrastructure promotes a positive association with learner achievement, the study revealed. And quality education can only be gained through provision of adequate resources in terms of infrastructure, accommodation, and the teaching. An availability of key infrastructure and resources in schools, 72.2% and 66% of the principals reported that computer laboratories and school libraries were unavailable. Some schools were found to have inadequate computers or laptops, sports equipment, as well as laboratory equipment, at 73.2%, 64.1%, and 53.6% respectively. Inadequate infrastructure affects ICT integration in learning, enhancement of digital literacy, nurturing of talents, innovation, and inquiry-based learning. 75.4% of the teachers indicated that they adopted ICT in teaching while 72.1% of principals reported adoption of ICT in teaching in their schools. Schools with more facilities posted significantly higher scores. The study revealed the prevalence of student indiscipline in schools is at 95.7%. 37.9% of the teachers reported absenteeism as a very common form of indiscipline. Absenteeism and indiscipline affect students' performance in school. Principals reported the following as form of indiscipline often experienced in school. Lateness at 38.1%, premarital sex at 25.5%, and truancy at 23.2%. Guidance and counseling was found to be the most preferred method of enforcing discipline in schools with 74% of the teachers citing that they very often used it. Some of them, for one reason or another, have some hiccups along the way which make them not to perform the way they should. And that's where now the guidance and counseling department comes in. 0.4% of the principals reported to have a TSC appointed professional counselor. 61.2% of the principals reported that the guidance and counseling departments were slightly effective. Major challenges noted to face teachers in the implementation of curriculum were insecurity at 72.5%, sickness at 60.7%, drug and substance abuse at 60.1%, 
natural calamities at 59.7%. 46.7% of the students and 28% of the teachers reported that schools had students with special needs and disabilities in their classes. The study revealed an availability of key infrastructure, facilities, and resources to support learners with special needs and disabilities. Students reported 89.4%, 86.3%, 85.2% and 64.3% an availability of adapted toilets, adapted chairs and desks, adapted games and sports, and adapted benches and stools in the laboratories, respectively. 54.3% of the teachers indicated that their schools did not have relevant and adequate SNE learning materials and assistive devices. 86% of the teachers have not been trained to support learners with special needs and disabilities. So when we go to schools, we support teachers on how to handle learners with special needs and disabilities. Ranges from learners with the hydrocephalus, cerebral palsy, learners with the muscular dystrophy, learners with autism, they're also here, some of them, the mild one, we also have learners with multiple conditions, learners without the upper limbs. Some also don't have the lower limbs. Uh, so we have very different learners. With learners with epilepsy, they are also here. 95.9% of the principals reported that teachers in the schools had not been trained to support learners with special needs and disabilities. Students with disabilities in inclusive schools require support to perform to the fullest potential. Although there has been slight improvement in specific areas of the assessed subjects, low learning outcomes, especially in higher order cognitive skills, continue to be observed. Gender and regional disparities in performance persist, while various factors continue to significantly influence learner achievement. For instance, student absenteeism, inadequacy of resources, parental engagement, principals, professional qualifications, level of education of the teacher, mastery of English as the language of instruction, competencies in mathematics in order to improve learning outcomes in the sciences, teaching and learning resources. Home is the first institution of a child that has significant relationship with the student's overall life. Therefore, we parents must provide a conducive environment and be good role models to our learners. Wakienda chuo tuna follow up. Akikuja mtatu wa support. Kama ni homework, angalia. Kama ni shule kitu ameitishwa, wasaidie tu. Jaribu kama mzazi cheza kaa wewe. Adolescent is most uh, prevalent at form 2. And you know, at form 2 is where we have uh, most of our young learners. And uh, we, as parents and guardians, we need to provide them with a listening ear, guide them, counsel them about the uh, trend behavior, which is uh, most likely to affect their learning outcome. Principles, professional qualifications, level of education of the teacher, mastery of English as the language of instruction, competencies in mathematics in order to improve learning outcomes in the sciences, teaching and learning resources, increase in TSC employed teachers which could be attributed to teacher recruitment through SECIP interventions, improvement in the proportion of teachers' workload, a decline in the number of BOM employed teachers, increase in the use of computers in teaching. When a parent gives uh, support to the school, children tend to perform well and so as a peer, we, our work is to see that anything that the administration needs for the success of our learners, we provide. 75.4% of the teachers indicated that they adopted ICT in teaching. 72.1% of principals reported adoption of ICT in teaching in their schools. A competency-based quality education in Kenya, a collective responsibility where every learner counts.